beats on metal, twists wires, makes lights glow. He brings joy to the lives of millions. He is the one, the only, Evan Favaro. Yeah. Come on down, buddy. Woo, 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 woo. All right, there we go. What's up, How you doing, man? man? It's been a year. It has. This is our anniversary. It is, I know. It's special. I met Evan here last year. He's making some sick stuff out there. He's got, you, you got two bikes here this year, right? Three. Three, Three bikes, bikes. Yeah. all right. Three bikes in the show. Yep. Um, Evan uh, is a custom bike builder, and it's a, that's a strange lot of people because it's some, they're artisans who decide that they don't want to make any money, usually. Yes, that's actually <laughs> and, uh, exactly what it is. You know, it, yeah. they are artists in the purest sense because, yeah. man, it is, that's a tough racket. So, but Evan, let, let's back up. Before you were a custom bike builder, um, you were born at some point. How did you get it? What was, what's your first memory of motorcycles? How did you get into motorcycles? Um, I used to just, when I was younger, um, I just started with little scooters and stuff, and then it just kind of went to mopeds, and it went to, I, I, uh, a buddy of mine gave me a 72 Honda CB350, the thing was sitting in the back of a greenhouse for, I don't know, 20 something years. Um, I tore it all apart, built a little bobber out of it, and then I guess that was just the beginning of a cool. really awesome now, disease. Now, when you were little, did, when you were younger, the, did, did you always take stuff apart? Yeah, I, I used to, my mom used to get real mad because I used to go under the dining room table and all the chairs and take all the chairs apart. And then <laughs> people would sit on my <laughs> And they'd fall out, take yeah. the chairs apart. Clever yeah. young man, clever young yeah. man. So you started with this 73 Honda bobber. Yeah. And uh, screamed around on it. Sure. And uh, you still had it? You sell it? I still have it. No, I can't get rid of it. It's like my first love, you know? Yeah, man. It's like that, you know, your first, you know? Oh, yeah. I you, get you. You, I, you always love her. Oh, yeah. You can't yeah. get away from that. Yeah. Well, the, um, did you go to school for this? Or, I mean. Uh, no. You didn't go no, to, you're I, not an MMI grad. No, I bought all my skills on eBay. All uh, right. Yeah, so that was there cool. You go. No, I, I learned <laughs> with, uh, I took a couple seminars with Faye Butler. Uh, he's, um, a really uh, world-renowned metal shaper. He's up in Massachusetts. Um, he's the same guy that taught Jesse James a lot of his metal work and all Sweet. that. And all right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, a lot, of, a lot of times I think the impression we get is that uh, um, these custom motorcycle builders have, uh, they've gotten some, they, they go to some special school where they get implanted with all this special knowledge. And that, but you know, it, uh, it, it brings to mind another good friend of mine, Paul Yaffe. Sure. who didn't graduate from high school. You yeah, know, Paul yeah. never even graduated from high school. And I was like, because he, he didn't want, he's like, I want to build motorcycles. I, it, I, don't, yeah. I don't want to do anything else. But you kind of have a natural inclination. And then um, you find mentors. Right. Uh, mentors right. is a yeah. huge, thick kind of layer of the custom motorcycle world that I don't think we talk enough about. So right. you're, you got mentored in doing some metal work. Now, in terms of the motorcycle world, can you think of somebody else that's mentored you in that way? Other than you, no. Oh, well, I mean, that's a given. No, that's... Uh, I mean, he's modeling himself after <laughs> me. You can tell with the hair, he's going to grow it. some. Yeah, so. I'm going to try it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I learned, I kept going uh, with Faye, and I, I just started as an apprentice with him. Um, I took a couple seminars with it, and then it got to the point where him and I just built a really good relationship. We worked really well together. And then he starts, um, he teaches at tech schools you know, up and down the East Coast and sometimes throughout the whole country. Um, so it got to the point where him and I worked together so well that he invited me to help teach him. Oh, that's te awesome. Uh, teach these classes with him, you know. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. one, of, one of the things I love most about Indian motorcycles is that every time I do an interview with a builder, they start a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. that, that's one of my favorite, yeah. favorite all-time things about IMS in particular. Yeah, it's pretty it's good. It's always Indian. Yeah. Always Indian. So we'll just give them, we'll just give we'll just give them a minute because they can't read, so they didn't see this on the schedule. <laughs> Thank you very much, Indian. We're only doing an interview right over here where we needed some quiet, but that's awesome. <laughs> you could do that during the band next time. That'd be cool. That would yeah. be good. That's a great time. There to be. There we go. We'll talk to him about that. Yeah. Um, at least I'm nice about it though. No, yeah. So. Now, all right, so you started traveling with Faye, and so you kind of, you not only apprenticed with him, but then you started teaching with him. Right, yeah, we went to um, a couple tech high schools. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, also cool. um, a buddy of mine, actually, this guy right here, he's also a Faye Butler uh, he, uh, student 
but he, he's a teacher as well. Oh. So I, I went uh, to his class once and helped teach those kids and stuff. And oh, man. That's amazing. cool, man. That's good stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to yeah, teach Well, and it's giving back. But, and it just reinforces that idea that, you know, you have a mentor and then you, you in some ways, need to become a mentor in those things. And right. that sometimes that's hard for people to get a handle on, like, how could I mentor somebody? But you, in terms of skills and apprenticeships and stuff, in, in this, this artistic metal crafting, you know, that's important. I mean, uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson, you know, I, I've read a lot of the, the historical documents about his apprenticeships in, in working silver sure. and, and pewter. And, you know, without his, you know, and he's, he would often say he would have never been anything had it not been, you know, for the mentors that he had. He learned how to, he, he says at one point, Thomas Jefferson says that uh, his mentors not only just sh helped him uh, mold metal. They molded him as a man and allowed him to mold this country. So, right. I mean, that's it's important. Mentors that's are cool. important. So, sure. But it, it, come on. Now, all right. So you you're traveling around. You're teaching people how to bang on metal. And uh, at what point? How long ago? What happened? When did you all of a sudden say, "Oh, I think I'll start a, a motorcycle shop"? Uh, I worked at a couple uh, bike shops throughout the years. Right after high school, um, I started full time the day after high school. I never went to college or anything. A um, couple bike shops, and then. Um, I was 21 when I started my own shop. Um, I'm 24 now, so it wasn't yeah. that long ago. Three years, yeah. Yeah, three and a half. Um, so I started my own business. I found a place, rented it. I got it all legal, you know, the whole LLC, the whole, the whole nine. Cost me an arm and a leg, but um, I just I worked at it, you know. I, I still work 16 hours every day, you know. Oh yeah. Six days so, a week. Yeah, so it's a, a grind. Yeah, it's a grind, and sure. uh, you know, it's not now. At your shop, you build motorcycles. Do you also? service bikes and do that kind of stuff yeah everything from an oil change to a full build yeah it's hard i know i've seen a lot of guys that are like oh i love building motorcycles and that's what i'm going to do and they're really good at it so I'm, they're not going to do the other stuff but that other stuff's your bread and butter sure typically. Is, I mean, that's yeah. how you that's how you do the rent that pays for all the kind of the fun yeah, stuff yeah you know, that, that you really do on your off time yeah, <laughs> you know? no, it's, so, true, man. it's no. like if you, if you if you calculate how many hours you have and how much you made yeah, like you never want to do that. Cost me money to build people bikes. Sometimes. Yeah, you never, you never want to do that <laughs> math. I got a shop in Atlanta, and I, uh, yeah, I, we, we predominantly focus now on hot rods because that's a, nice. it's a huge thing in the south. That's southeast. what I'm doing now too. Yeah, sure. right, yeah, and guys are now shifting in hot rods and motorcycles are really kind of yeah. melded, and so I've been doing the hot rod thing. Man, I never do my math on that. If I try to oh figure out, God. yeah, I, I don't do the math. I just, mm. as long as I paid the bills and I'm eating. Which I obviously am. Yeah, I am not. I'm not complaining. <laughs> now, the name of your shop, Speakeasy. Speakeasy Motors. Yeah. Speakeasy Motors, which he reminded me. He said, "You butchered the name of my shop. Stop doing it. <laughs> Have that trademark. You need to use it." Speakeasy yeah. Motors. Where'd that come from? Um, I just I'm really into that era style, you know, yeah. 20s, 30s kind of stuff, you know, because I, I build a, a lot of cars from that era, you know. Yeah. You know, chop Model A's and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and also, it's just it's easy to remember. It's kind of like definitive, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of like very generic uh, motorcycle shops with the very similar names. I wanted something that was a little different, something to stand out, something easy to remember. That, when we were coming to New York, I remembered that I last year you had you were set up as a vendor last year as well. I was in the Ultimate Builder last year. Right. Didn't, you had a booth years. too, though, right? No. Oh, you didn't have a booth. No. No. I can't remember. You had T-shirts, but I remember you didn't have one for me last year. It was my size. So, but I did remember. I was like, this year, I'm definitely going to remember. What size are you? An uh, extra large. Got one for you. Thank you. Last year I was a double X, so nice. props to me. I lost That's a lot of weight. If I Thank you, TJ. There you go. <laughs> one of my crew in the back there. Yeah, I saw Mark Wahlberg today, and my uh, my wife and girlfriend saw him at Atlantis <laughs> um, nice. about six months ago. And all I've heard about for the last six months is how chiseled he was. So I lost 45 pounds. Yeah. I was like, I'm tired of being the fat guy. There you go. But they still talk about him. It didn't what? do any good. I have a couple of people that want it like three X's. I just tell them I'll give them an XL and a salad. <laughs> That's nice, yeah. And a map of New York. Tell them to take a take a walk. Sure. That'd be nice. Hey, um, now, there's been a lot of highlights. Obviously, mentoring with Faye. I mean, getting mentored by Faye, that's huge. Opening your own shop at the age you did, that's huge. Being able to say you've been in business for three years, you know, yeah, almost that's four huge. almost four now. That's huge. And if don't get too excited. They say to, in business school, you got to be in business five years before you can call yourself a, a success. So you got another year? No. Yeah, right. Being, being successful, you know, being able to do that, that's great. What are some other highlights of your kind of your, your kind of your rise um, to fame? I mean, you're kind of a rocket right now. About a year and a, actually more than a year and a half ago, last spring of 2013, <clears throat> I saw an ad on Facebook um, that 
uh, Orange County Choppers was hiring. Um, and it was for a new TV show on, they had a whole season on CMT. Um, so I applied, I went through this whole process of elimination. Um, I was one of like 1,200, 12 or 1,500 applicants, whatever. Wow. Whole process of elimination. It went from just a, a producer out in California, a phone interview, and then it was a Skype interview, and then this and that, and then I made it down to like the top six. Um, then we all flew out to California. Um, now, Orange County Choppers is in New York. A lot of yeah. people think it's in Orange yeah. County, California. It's not. <laughs> but the production company was in California. So we went out there, then we did the whole on film kind of interview thing. Um, and then I got a call a couple weeks later that they picked me. That's so that exciting. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So. Now you brought a clip, it's, it's about a five minute clip that we're gonna watch here, and the, of you building a bike, right? There. Yeah, I mean, we, this was, uh, the bike was completed about maybe the beginning of the summer. We built a bike for the New England Patriots. Um, Basically, it's it's an entire bike build in five minutes. So there's a lot of it that's skipped. You know, it's like you're not going to see every every single step of the process yeah. and everything. But it kind of just boils it all down into five minutes from the original putting the frame on the lift to running, driving, and the unveil. Oh, that's um, great. Well, TJ, can you roll that clip for us? They gave us our own little TV down here. Oh, sure. Look at that. You can see I'm, I'm the really good looking one. Right? Yeah. I didn't come in yet though. Yeah, I was gonna say, out of that crew, that's not saying a lot. No. no. <laughs> it's so easy to build a motorcycle. It really is. And it, it really doesn't take much longer than this video. It was actually all filmed in real time. I was gonna say, all yeah. putting parts together. Yeah. No. See, I'm, I'm a fat. Thank you. Oh, nice, oh, dude. Look, look at that. that. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a couple more t-shirts over by my bike, so. So I'm a fabricator. You'll see me when the bike's in raw metal. I, and then they're hands down to, um, like, Christian and Rick. Oh, I see you there. Yeah. You'll see a lot of machine shop time. There's Jim. Actually, he'll be here later tonight. Jim. You did all your own stunts for this show? I did, you know? Wow. Yeah. It's funny working there and then going back to my shop, you realize how spoiled I am working in that shop compared to mine. They have some tools there. The, yeah, it's amazing. The uh, theater, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a great shop to work in. Good experience for you then? Yeah. 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 See, the Jim, right now we're showing the gas tank being, um, the sides were machined. Right. And then I filled in all the sheet metal and all the whole face and all that. So it was cool, so it was a uh, 3D oh, yeah. sides. So. building the exhaust. Now, how many of you worked on that bike? How many of it did it take to build that bike? Um, well, it's a whole team, man. It's like, we all kind of have our own jobs. Like, uh, on this bike, Rick was fabricating another bike at the time, so I, I took over the fabrication for this one um, while Rick was working on another one. And then Jim's machine parts, and uh, Johnny's another kid in the machine shop. They're making the wheels and, and like some of the fender struts, stuff like that, and like the air cleaners. Um, so we all kind of work as a team. And then it goes to Ralphie here getting painted. Um, and then it comes to Christian who does like the wiring and the assembly, all right. you know. And then depending on how much is going on in the shop, we'll kind of bounce around, you know, I'll help with the assembly or sometimes Christian or Rick will come over, help me, you know, fabricate some of the bike. And all right. Hey, you know, uh, the painter that's on site in our progressive garage this weekend is Nub. Right. Who was on the original show sure. that OCC did. Yep, he was their yep. painter. He's painting uh, some helmets up there. Yeah. It was cool. We unveiled this in uh, Boston. My brother's a Boston fireman. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That was cool. It's cool to tribute. Well, that, that's even uh, just kind of a happy coincidence for you. Yeah, right? it was. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is nice. 
there. He's he's gonna help now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. helping now. Yeah, his feet were getting tired from keeping him on the on his. I bet. Yeah, the blood rushes out of your feet. Yeah. But, uh, I have that job occasionally here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Football seat. I like it. That's it. Pig skin. No. Yeah. That is an incredible tank. You did a nice job with that stuff. Man. Yeah, it was cool. It's a cool bike. It's not your style. Not no, something. You, not that's not something that you built. I mean, you know what it is. A lot of um, I, you got to remember you're building these bikes for corporations. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like so it's a different. We, we built a bike for Sonic to drive in. You know. Right. Do you really think we wanted to put a giant bright yellow, blue, red logo? Right, no, yeah. but it's a different thing. It's an advertising tool. Exactly. So, they're, yeah. they're not using it because they're going out to bike nights. They're using it as an advertising campaign right. in most of the, you know, in most of the bikes. It's an artistic um, effort for sure. advertising. Yeah. It's like a it's, commercial. It's or a poster else. for these guys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Not all of them. You know, yeah. we do we do a lot of like a lot of the off-air bikes are yeah. cool. They're all like you know the guys that do that and they go to the shows and yeah. stuff that are actually cool bikes. You know. Now. Did you, did you find him? Did you learn anything there? I mean, did you learn anything new, or was it pretty much just you? You got in there, part of the team, and they really, I mean. I, I feel like I, I've been able to um, better my skills because I have access to better, better machinery and stuff like that. Um, and building higher dollar builds, I have to challenge myself more to meet these demands. It's where it's not like originally I'll just make something cool, you yeah. know, like that I think looks good. But now I have a rendering and I need to meet that rendering. So oh, it's harder okay. to, all right, here's a drawing of a bike. I need to build that. But it needs to look just like that. I yeah. can't just build, oh, yeah. oh that yeah. tank's cool. That yeah. line will work. But now it's like that line doesn't work. I have to redo it and I need to make it look because that's what was approved yeah. by the customer. Um, so it's got different challenges. And, and it's definitely, yeah. I can see even just in the past year and a half, if you look at like a couple of my bikes over there, you could just see my fit and finish on my new bikes compared to my bikes a year or two years ago, which were still nice, but now my fit and finish tighter and tighter. is, yeah, I'm dialing in more. I have a little more attention to detail. That's awesome, and, man. That's, that's great. You know. Now, uh, how do you, I know that this, uh, which I love, in case somebody from Progressive's here, um, I love my job as spokesperson for motorcycle insurance, but one of the things that it does do is it, it, kind of, it, it has taken me out of building kind of cars and motorcycles yeah. for a living. Um, I travel 150 days a year, so I still, you know, I kind of shape shifted my shop a little bit into a into a buddy's airplane hangar that was empty, and we work out of there now. And I have a couple of uh, ding dongs that drink my beer and pretend to yeah. not steal things from me. I appreciate yeah. the, at least the pretense of that, but uh, no, they're really good guys. But how did you keep your shop open doing that? Um, I get up at 5.30 every day. I get up there, I start, seven, start there at 7. I work till about 3.30, 3.34. Shoot down to my shop. It's about 45 minutes to an hour back. Um, and then I'll work at my shop. I usually get there around 5 and I'll work till about 9, 9.30. Wow, okay. Um, so, yeah, 16 hours every day. You know, right. just keep that grind going. So this is also helping because you don't have to try to figure out kind of your dating schedule or anything because you really don't have time for that. No, it's easy. Oh, it's easy. He's still, still no, working no, there. He's I, younger than I am. I, I just yeah. sleep the rest of the time. Yeah. So that's cool, man. So now yeah. the bikes you got here, you got three bikes here today. Yeah. What, what, which one, I know you love them all. Which one's your favorite right now that you, you when you look at it, you um, go, man, I like it. I just finished one. It's over in between Kawasaki and Suzuki. I have all three of them lined up. It's a red uh, cafe racer. I hand built the tail. Uh, it's got the oil tank in it. It's got, um. Ducati single-sided swing arm on it, CBR 1000 front end, a lot of hours. In That's fact. got the cream swing arm on it. Is yeah, it? yeah, yeah, okay, I saw one. It. yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, it's this crazy red, um, Toontown paint painted it, and uh, Burt Graphics did a killer job, gold leaf pinstriping, yeah. real nice pearl paint. Um, just a lot of time and effort. And now, have you got, are these three bikes sold to customers? Yeah. All right, so that's always nice. Yeah, I, I, I can't really afford to just build bikes and hope I sell them. Because then if you do that, then the guy that buys it, they're going to want to change this or change that. I'd rather right. just uh, take an existing bike and modify it. And that way it's built to exactly the way There's you want that, it. And you know? it fits it. Yeah, it fits Exactly. Like, right. I, built it, I built it for that rider. Yeah. You know, so it, he's comfortable on it. It's meant for him, his height. 
you know. Well, man, I tell you, I, you're an impressive guy. I mean, your, your talents are off the chain. Um, you're well beyond your years in terms of, in terms of skill level, obviously, with some good, good uh, apprenticing and mentoring there has, has, has helped you do that. Obviously, though, natural giftedness, I mean, you can't discount that. I mean, artists, artists really are born. Uh, I know my brother's a musician. He's got a musician soul. I, I play the trumpet. Uh, I can play technically very well. I have no soul for it. Can't improvise, can't do any of that. So uh, I knew I wasn't a musician, but artists are born. And, and so you, you really, I guess. Yeah, I, I want to encourage you and, and tell you, man, that, that's awesome. That's and cool. uh, I, of course, uh, old bull, young bull, I want to encourage you, man. Find somebody to mentor because yep. you, you've got something that you could really, really right now continue if you're not already. You've got something to, to give somebody. I loved what uh, uh, Laura Clock did uh, with helping for horsepower. Yeah. You know, they went to a school and took the kids that were the, the bottom 20 kids that were about to drop out. And they took those kids, put them on, and had them build a, a land speed record motorcycle that they took really? to Bonneville. And so those kinds of things, man, you, we, don't, we discount it. You know, you're just stupid bikers, right? You got something, man. You can give it to somebody, right. and even if they don't have a natural giftedness at it, man. I see. I when I was, was coming from uh, the airport in Newark to my hotel in New Bergen, I saw so many signs up for sheet metal workers and that kind of right. stuff. Even if they only get to there, sure. you know that. Well, not just to there, but even, not that they're going to be building custom bikes. But even if you just provide somebody with a skill, so they know they can go out and get a job as a mentor, that's a great yeah. thing. So. I just even now I got this. Uh, this kid I met on Instagram, 17-year-old kid, just happened to live two towns over. He's a pinstriper, oh. right? So he said, he comes down and say, "Hey, pinstripe my English wheel, and I'll show you how to weld." Oh man, so, that's it. Yeah, that's it's it, great. It's man. Cool. That's it. You're doing it. I love yeah, it. I love it, man. Cool. So. I'm, I'm a bigger fan than I was a little while ago, and I'm a huge fan. What's your next big thing? What you got coming up? What are you most excited about? Um, just hanging out with you, man. Wow, well, I can see that, man. This no, is, I hope this uh, is a pretty big deal for me, hanging out with me. The ultimate builder showing that bike off. You know, it's a cool bike. Yeah. And, well, and it, I, I understand Sunday there's going to be some judging going on and maybe some uh, money tossed around Sunday Hopefully. afternoon. Hopefully. So I'll be here for that. Maybe we'll have you up on stage giving one of those big fake checks. Yeah, right. When, and then they tell you the checks in the mail. I, that's I, my favorite part of that award show. So I'm actually what, what I'm really looking forward to. I just uh, I just bought a house, bought my first house oh, up, man. up in New York State with a shop on the property. So it's nice. Very I don't nice. have to deal with traffic of Bergen County anymore. And very cool. Very get cool. out of here. Well, Evan, man, it's such a joy. Give it up Thanks, for man. Evan. Appreciate Go it. over and see his bikes. Look him up on uh, Speakeasy Motors. Yeah, man. And uh, Evan, good, good on you. Thank you so much. Go see him. Cool. Okay. Hey, guys, we're not done here at the Progressive School of Rock stage.